How would you go about accurately sensing current, especially when it comes to the reliable operation of motors and inverters, power distribution units, or power supplies? Yep, you guessed it, current sense amplifiers. Yes, current sense amplifiers are really good for measuring current up to a couple hundred amps without the need for isolation and can be a great addition to your next design if you're working on a variety of different kinds of designs like ADAS systems, infotainment clusters, and EV traction inverters in automotive designs or also industrial designs like factory automation applications or base stations. But do you know what to consider when choosing what current sense amplifier would be the best fit for your next design? Well, folks, that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, David Doan from Rome Semiconductor and I explore the what, where, and how of current sense amplifiers. We also examine the role that topology and common mode voltage play when selecting a current sense amplifier and the variety of benefits that Rome Semiconductor current sense amplifiers bring to the table. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Rome Semiconductor. Hi, David. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Okay, so we're talking about current sense amplifiers today. But before we dig into the details of the solutions in this space, David, give me some details about current sense amplifiers. Sure. So current sense amplifier are devices with uh, measure current through a sun resistor by measuring the voltage across the sun. So as illustrated on this slide on the lower right-hand corner, the output from the current sense amplifier is an analog signal whose magnitude is proportional to the current and is normally fed into an ADC. And an MCU can monitor ADC's output and take appropriate actions. When the current is monitored for short or over conditions, sometimes the current sense amplifier output is fed directly into an analog comparator, which would trigger if the voltage across the sun exceeds a predetermined threshold. Now, to minimize the power loss, no, normally sun resistance is chosen to be small. That means the output voltage, the voltage gradient from the current sense amplifier tends to be small and can easily be corrupted by noise. Or maybe it may not be large enough to match the full-scale voltage of the ADC in the next stage, and that reduces the accuracy of the analog to digital conversion. Therefore, another function of the current sensing amplifier is to amplify the output to an appropriate level, and that is called the gain. And it can be, say, from two, three times to 200 times of the input signal. Okay, so David, what kind of applications would current sense amplifiers be a good fit for? They are used whenever there's a need to monitor current for control and or protection purpose. So you'll find them in power supplies, charger, power distribution unit, solenoid or motor control. For example, in motor control, we normally need to know precisely how much current is going into the motor because the current determines the motor speeds and torque. So we also need to know when the current rises above certain threshold, because that may indicate that there might be a short somewhere in the motor, whether short to ground or short to a different phase. So this protection function, detection of short or over current condition, is very common in power supplies and power distribution units. Okay, so... David, what kind of design concerns should we keep in mind when it comes to current sense amplifiers? And when should we choose this kind of solution? Oh, there are many considerations. Here, I just mentioned a few which are important in most use cases. But please do keep in mind sometimes a seemingly trivial detail such as like the power supply, say 15 volt instead of 5 volt, may rule out certain option because the consensus amplifier being considered doesn't have that option. So the first consideration is more on the system level. 
So that means the designer would have to look at the minimum maximum current that need to be measured, the required accuracy, and look out there to see which one are available and what is the acceptable power loss. And given, for example, what is available on the market today regarding the sun, I would say generally from a few amps to two or 300 milliamps would be possible to be measured by current sense amplifier. The second consideration is accuracy, obviously. So again, that is really a system consideration on the device level that comes down to what is the gain accuracy, the offset voltage, the input bias. And since these accuracy need to be maintained over time, over temperature, and in general over operating condition. So that means the drift aspect, specifically drift over temperature is also important as well. And the third consideration is a common mode voltage. Now we say earlier that the consent simplifier is designed to measure the voltage across the sun, which is chosen to have small resistance. So the voltage is small. But having a small voltage means they are prone to be corrupted by noise. So the consideration is that the output gets to be large enough so that it's not susceptible to noise. And at the same time, also, it needs to be large enough to match up against the full-scale voltage range of the ADC, which is the next device in the signal processing chain. So with today's available current sense amplifier, I would say anywhere from like 5 volt to 80 volt common mode voltage is okay for, for what is available today. And the last consideration is bandwidth. So a current sense amplifier must be able to capture the changes that are of interest. For example, in motor control, this bandwidth depends on what is called the PWM frequency at which the motor is controlled. And that means the current sense amplifier must be fast enough to capture the change. And when monitoring for protection function, it needs to be fast enough to monitor any transient, any change that may damage the device downstream. So practically, the current sense amplifier would be good enough for application that requires bandwidth from maybe tens of kilohertz to, I would say, at most a couple hundred kilohertz. Okay, so we also need to consider the topology of current sense amplifiers as well, right? Absolutely. So as shown in this slide, we see that both low side and high side sensing have their pro and cons. It is basically a trade-off between low cost versus features and performance. The good thing is current sense amplifier like those from Rome can support both, whether it's high side versus low side, as long as that is up to certain common mode voltage we mentioned earlier. And in case of Rome lineup, that is about 26 volt below that. You can select any of our current sense amplifier and you don't care about the topology because they support both. But beyond that, you may have to pick the part that, hey, my common mode is like 40 volt, 80 volt. In that case, yes, you do have to pick out a part that is appropriate for that. So, David, talk to me about Rome's current sense amplifiers a bit. Yes. So we design ours with the idea like we like to minimize the selection in a sense like we like to provide a few parts that can support the most number of use cases practically. So when we look at this slide show block diagram of the architecture that we use. So basically it is a two-stage architecture with a chopper M at the input followed by a gain amplifier at the output. And the chopper amp's function is to minimize the input offset and drift, both of which affects accuracy and stability over time. And this also ensure that any external low-pass RC filter that the customer may use at the input will not affect the IC input impedance and hence its accuracy. The second amplifier you see here sets the gain. And over here, it's good that we have an on-chip resistor and with trimming and with proper matching that they are properly matched so that the gain to be what we want it to be. Because one of the big factors that affect the amplifier's accuracy is the matching of the resistance. 
So, David, what kind of benefits does Roam Current Sense amplifiers bring to the table? So we can look at one is advantage clarity to like roll your own where the customer may build using external component of amps. And then the second is the available current sense amplifier from other suppliers. So compared to roll your own, for example, if customers say, yeah, I can do it myself, no problem. Sure. But compared to a solution like that, a purpose-built current sense amplifier say bomb cost, you see here, like can be as much as like 50% for both the part cloud and the solution with the whole PCB area. So that's one advantage. A bigger advantage is in accuracy because when designing using discrete, it is very hard and costly as well to buy matching resistor and to maintain the accuracy over the, all the operating condition. For example, it's hard to make 1% accuracy. The high common mode rejection ratio, which is a measure of how it is able to basically ignore what is common at both input of the amplifier and just focus on what is the difference. That is key to accuracy, especially when we're talking about the measurement being done at a high common mode voltage. As a rule of thumb, I think a good accuracy requires the CMRR, that is the term is called, common mode noise rejection ratio to be at least 110, 120 dB. The Rome amplifier has CMRR at 130 dB. The full advantage is the low input bias current. The input bias current has, I would say, the same effect as input offset voltage, which affects the amplifier accuracy. And in some cases, you can walk around. In some cases, they are not in issues. In some cases, they are not. So having a low input bias current is a good thing to have. And then the last thing is that the job amplifier we use at the input stage, I think I mentioned this before as well, is that it prevents the loading effect of the external low-pass RC filter from degrading the filter accuracy, which can degrade by, like as we show here, 0.2% or so. Okay. So what other benefits should we keep in mind here? Yeah, so the other benefit, more about flexibility, the ability to support different use cases. And for that, for example, we have a lineup. We mentioned before all of our, actually I would say most of our amplifier support both high side, low side sensing, and all of them support bi-directional sensing. And they support different gain. You can see here they support gain from 20, 50, 100 to 200, and then they support common mode voltage from up to 26 volt and beyond that, we have part that support up to 40 volt and up to 80 volt. So I would say like, regardless of the use case, I think most of our amplifier will be able to support a wide variety of use case out there. And all of them comes in industry standard package. And for customers who cares about longevity, how long that room will support it, we guarantee the 20-year longevity. Okay, so what kind of options does Rome offer in terms of industrial and automotive current sense amplifiers? We have two main lineups, one targeted at industrial applications, as you can see on this slide. So those on the left-hand side and the right-hand side in blue, a lineup for automotive. And they share similar core spec and packages, but with different options with regard to gain, common mode voltage, bidirectional versus unidirectional, and packages. The main differences between the industrial parts and the automotive part, aside from the ACQ100 qualification, obviously, is in the common mode voltage and power supply. The automotive part support common mode voltage up to 40 and 80 volt, while those on the industrial side only support up to 26 volt. And then the power supply for auto team thought can support power supply 5 volt or up to 18 volt, because sometimes having like 15 volt is the only power supply available. Okay, so David, can you give me some more details about the industrial solutions you mentioned? Sure. 
So the industrial part numbers are powered by low voters, 2.7 to 5.5 volt, and they support common more voters we mentioned earlier, up to 26 volt. The input offset voltage, which is critical to the accuracy, is 0.6 millivolt. The gain options are 20, 50, 100, and 200. There are two series, and they are differentiated mainly by the package. One series is available in SOT 23, 6 pin package, 2.9 by 2.8 millimeter, and support bidirectional sensing. The other series, BD1421 FVJ, they are available in a larger package, 4.9 by 3 millimeter package, and they support only unidirectional sensing. One standout feature is the much lower input bias current than some of the competing parts. I think as we show in the slide, some of the competing part has, I don't know, I would say close to 50 times, almost an order of magnitude, 75 actually, compared to ours. So the input bias has similar effect to the input offset on output accuracy. It is not always an issue, and sometimes you can work around that with restrictions, but it's definitely better to have that number as low as possible. So can you give me some details about the automotive solutions you mentioned as well? Yeah, so we mentioned before that these two lineup have similar core spec. They differ mainly in the common mode voters that we support. So the automotive lineup support higher common mode voltage up to 40 volt and 80 volt compared to 26 volt for the industrial part. The other thing is they support much higher bandwidth. So that is 40 kilohertz versus 20 kilohertz for industrial part. So what kind of EVK or design support does Rome offer for these current sense amplifiers? We provide uh, EVK including with the sun on board. And the part that is on it, the current sense amplifier has fixed gain. And if that does not meet what the customer needs, they can easily swap it out and swap in a new pin compatible part with a different gain. As we mentioned earlier, our lineup support gains from 20, 25 to 200. So it's hard to like to predict what customer needs, but having pin compatible part with different gains uh, simplify the process. And then in addition to the EVK, we provide reference schematic, reference layout. We also provide SPICE model for simulation as well. Fantastic. Well, David, can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, sure. So in summary, the accurate current sensing is required in many applications, such as power supply, power distribution unit, solar noise control, motor controls. And Rome offer a lineup of current sense amplifier for industrial and automotive applications. And they support high side, low side, bi-directional sensing, unidirectional sensing, they have different gains option, and support common mode voltage up to 880 volt. The standout feature, one plus minus 1% accuracy and high common mode rejection ratio up to 130 dB. They offer high performance, good accuracy, why saving bomb costs and solution size. Fantastic. Well, David, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Rome Semiconductor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com 